Yo, it's Guido coming at you with the Tactics Talk, guys. Welcome back to GSOR uh, Palooza, the GSOR, which is the new Tier 8 Medium, sorry, Tier 8 Premium TD Auto Loading. A lot of people like it. They think it's a beast. It's a British tank. I did poorly in it, so I'm here to learn as well. But I got the question, how do I do better? I have two replays for you. Number one, how do I do better from APA Woody, Clan GFLC, and then another Masters, from Nonamanidus, from Clan HBG, who wins. This first one is a loss, and the question was, what could I do to change this? So Woody says, i uh, love to see your perspective, where I went wrong, I knew I needed to reset cap, but also needed to time my shots and mags. Ended up screwing up what could have been an epic comeback win. Well, I'm excited already about that. Started the game from our base, watched mediums get melted, EBR fell back, so did I. Pushed back the enemy attack from the field, then City fell, EBR died, leaving me in an arty against several of their guys. Oh yeah, that's where it gets juicy, right? That's where it gets spicy. I took out their GSOR, fantastic, and started maneuvering out into the field. Spotted their arty, took them out, then kept moving, trying to get behind them, and there is where I'd love to know what I could have, should have done differently. Second ace in the GSOR so far, but dang, these wins are hard to come by. You're two times better than I am, my friend, as far as aces go. But let's take a look at this. We are here on highway. This is a first look, and I'm going to look at both of these. Because, frankly, I got my rear kicked in the GSOR. I haven't gone back to it. We'll figure it out. I know there's a lot of people that like it, and I didn't particularly care for it. But let's see what happens here with APA Woody Clan at GFLC. Yo to those guys. I always want to say shout out, but that's Klaus's thing, so I need something else. I guess yo works. That's my thing, right? So yo to those guys. <laughs> and we build our nest. We are carrying 20 APCR. We are sipping on our tea and crumpets. Or pie. Or what is that? Crumpets, I think it is. Does it say? Tea and blood pudding? What do we got here? Pudding and tea. Oh, God. It is pudding. Why would it not be a crumpet or some such thing? Maybe even just a English muffin. Do you know they don't really have English muffins in England? I mean, they have muffins, but they're not English muffins. That's an American thing. That's an American thing. We have a LT raging around. We have reloaded our 49,000-year reload. We have our four shots, and we're using regular AP. Bottom tier, and that is going to be tricky for the GSOR. You know why? Because its standard pen is poo. That's why. <laughs> it's not good. It is not good for a TD. It's atrocious. But the gold ammo is okay. We got 20 rounds though, we can flex. Alright, right off the bat, man. Right off the bat, man. <laughs> anyway, from the beginning, you're not really in the fight, are you? And this is the problem with a TD and a, and a tank like this. You could have raged up forward, but wow, that would have been just tempting the old Conqueror, GC, and all the other guys that are camping. So I can't really fault you. I do this sometimes on this map too. That's going to be a shot that's missed because ooh, oh, you need lead fire, my friend. Oof. All right. Well, there's two shots, both of which probably could have pinned with more lead fire. I don't think that was necessarily RNG so much as you just did not lead the target. And I hope you understand what that means. We're just going to pause there. I'm sure you do. But uh, and if you had it to do again, you probably would have gone a little, you know, a little in front of that guy. He's moving from left to right, and you want the shot to intercept him and if you shoot right at him while he's moving the shot tends to go behind him so we won't belabor that point i think if we look at the idea of what could i have done to improve the result we have to start at the very beginning and say where were the opportunities missed that i could have reduced hit points because reducing hit points on tanks such as this guy who's now coming around and taking on our e50 is very important because you probably wouldn't have been doing that either he wouldn't have done it or he would have died faster does he, yeah, so we got shots going into the E50, and that's a great example. The E50 sort of gets punished by this YOLO M48 that had you put two hits on him, he wouldn't be sitting there doing that. Just one example, right? So there's a, what, a lot of what ifs. That's a why in the road that we never really got to, but you have to look at those opportunities. All right, let's just pause and see what we got. Not much that is good, that's for sure. We've lost a bunch of our tanks that went that way. We left the Leopard PTA alive, unfortunately. And now we have some guys in the middle. So we're going to kind of hang out here. We got reloaded. Let's see if we can get this guy. There we go. Again, we're playing a bit of a dangerous game without getting enough lead fire on that guy. So this is becoming now a kind of a trend item there, Woody. So think a little bit more about that. One th Now we're into our gold rounds. And by the way, the velocity on the gold premium special rounds 
for this tank are 1411. That's in really nice velocity. And Tui, 1066 for just the AP. Why is that important and why am I even mentioning it? Because when you're talking about lead fire, the faster your shell, the less lead you need. That can be a little tricky, actually. It can because if you're swapping between the two and you get kind of used to that thousand foot per second thing or meters, I think it is, and then you switch over to the 1400, you might get too much lead fire. And that's just something to, to put in your hip pocket. That's more master's level stuff. So we're going to fall back here because we don't want to mess with the 100 LT seeing us. And then everyone and their dog is shooting us from above. And we keep run, run away. Run, run away. What was that 80s band that had that song? Run, run away. Like Scottish or something. Man, I'm going to look that up. That was a fun... That's a fun... I don't think it's called Run, Run Away, but... Isn't that, the, isn't that the chorus? Anyway, we've fallen back. And I'm going to tell you, you know, one of the reasons you're going to find yourself in the situation you're in is you are four minutes into the game and we've only done 620 damage. The only way for you to get more damage was either to go into town and try to support those guys or push in a little more aggressively. There we go. Nicely done. Put another shot into this guy. Yes, he's dead. Fantastic. We're lit. Move on. All right, there you go. Nicely done. See if you can get that one more shot off. Oh, I might have just taken a snap as he ran by. Nope. Oh, we're going to get a nice clean shot. There we go. Well done. So you were smarter than I was. You put that extra shot into that guy. Come on, guys. Looks like the EBR is reloading, or what's he doing? Oof. Finally got rid of that guy. The poor 92 is spotted, though. And we're doing all right. This actually looks not too bad. Five to seven. Are we going to lose the T92 to the Conqueror? You know the thing about the Conqueror on this map, especially if it's like K at K1, it doesn't actually have the range to reach into this corner. It is a relatively short range artillery for the bigger map, especially if it's in a corner. Look at that next time. You're looking at the range you can shoot when you're in the Conqueror GC and you will notice you can't quite reach the edge of the thousand meter by thousand meter maps. All right, so we're going to creep forward with some of our friends and look if we can't take down some of these guys. Yeah, you need to get rid of the Leopard and the T-62A who are doing the spotting. And they've all tucked up. That's actually to your advantage. There's not too many back there. The other GSOR is actually playing peekaboo. Ferdinand's moving in. You've lost the EBR. That was unfortunate. You kind of wish he hadn't YOLO'd in there like that. Using the bushes. Backing out, we're up to 1660. And the T-55 dies to the Ferdy. I'm not imagining he got spotted. Let's find out. The shots come in there, or artillery. Maybe he did not. And the city has done poorly. Looks like they're down as well. Yeah, I don't think you have any really good options here. You know, it's possible that had you pushed in, and this is one of the things about this tank, that makes it difficult. It's possible if you pushed in, you might have been able to kill a couple of them, but their GSOR has four shots too and is on good hit points. It's highly unlikely you're going to kill all three of them with your four shots. So one argument is get in there and try to get some damage. The other one is, well, shoot, you can't really push over that edge because pretty quickly you're going to get worn out by all three of those guys. Uh, it, you will be tempted sometimes playing the GSOR to go after these kinds of situations right here. I think it would be more likely in the case of seeing one or two of them there pushing in and if you get a bounce or a miss or something it becomes very difficult but holy cow look at this this is f no way you're kidding me okay. <laughs> wait a minute how on earth did a wow all right folks the thing is that thing has actually pretty good camo it's moving camo isn't fantastic I'm, I'm quite surprised by that I'm assuming that the leopard PTA just had atrocious spotting that was really strange to be honest but good deal uh it happened nice job right there see if we can kill him off oh boy careful careful you shot right at him man you see how that shot went into his to his backside that's only because the range was close enough that the line of and the line of sight was low enough or his speed was low enough that it didn't matter i like hitting c there you do need to get reloaded so you can start sorting this thing out back to the pta i'll be honest i'm not really sure why you didn't get spotted right there he may have had a bad crew uh, maybe his commander was dead. There's a number of things that are possible right there. Or just you had enough bush between you, but I'm just blown away he didn't see you. Nice job, though. What I was saying before you got in there and started killing the other guy there is that once you saw him, you didn't just snap that shot off. Man, I'm tempted to do that all the time. I like how you actually backed out and went, let me see if I can make this dark. He doesn't appear to see me. 
then once it got dark, you just take them down. Slow reload. Oh man, this GSOR. He keeps moving. Oh, he just got out. Oh no. Is he gonna sneak? Yes. There we go. Nice. <laughs> but it's only us all by myself. All right. So, wow. What do we do here? What do we do here? All three of them appear to be coming from the town. It's a 101, an ISM, and a Ferdinand. If you try to run all the way back to get their artillery, you are looking at them jumping on the cap and you not being able to get by. It's the obvious play to sit in these bushes with a TD. They're probably going to all three come at you pretty hard. And there's a decent amount of cover between the silos and the buildings and stuff that they can get pretty close before you can start getting shots off. Once you shoot four, you've got another 40 seconds. Once they know the shots are coming from the bushes, they're going to go right for the bushes. So this is a tough one. For my money, I think you try to do something different and maybe slide down low right here and try to get up on the side of them. Maybe assassinate one and make a runner. And hopefully you can get 40 sec seconds of running out of the way. But let's see what Woody does. Like I said, this is a first look, so I don't know what he's going to do right here. Let's see what Woody does. He's kind of looking around the bushes. That open spot's dangerous because they can get the view. You've knocked down all these other trees to help yourself out. And it looks like now we're going to kind of go down low. Come around the bottom. All right, they're not on cap. That'll be the nice warning that you know where one of them is. Maybe one of these bushes here to take a peek up on the edge. Very surprised they haven't pushed in. The question then being, and I didn't really pay attention closely whether you knew or not, but the hit points of those four or three are going to be very important. And it would be nice to know what they are. There are mods, I think, that will give you the relative hit points of the two teams. Bit of a cheat as far as I'm concerned. Especially in, in a case like this. Which we get, oh, we get that guy spotted. Okay, well, that was dumb. Why is he there? You know why, folks? Because he has a, lo a low range. And that is exactly what I talked about earlier. Nice job. He hits C as soon as he kills him off. Now, if the GC is any kind of smart, he'll have been clicking in that direction to let them know that's where he got killed from. And then once you look at that as one of those three tanks, you go, okay, that's the direction. And I wonder if he slid down low right there. But I don't like the overall hit points thing. The idea is that it's not information that you couldn't otherwise get, but that assumes the team is communicating on tanks that were spotted that you never saw and then are telling you what the hit points are. So I find that excuse to be lame at best and to be untrue most of the time. All right, so a guy jumps on cap. This is not a bad move. I kind of like how you're working this. Should be a little bit surprising that you're coming from this direction unless somebody's actually moved into... Oh, yeah, there we go. Boom. And I just let this guy have it. Nice. Oh, no, no. Oh, no. They got one if they put one into you, and that was from the other direction. 3,446, not the other direction, from the same direction. Did he shoot HE? Well, fantastic. That is some good information right now. He's probably thinking, well, it's a fairly light TD, so I think I'll just put a little HE in that guy. There are some bushes up on top right there you might be able to work your way into. If the Ferdinand was smart, he's charging you right now. The ISM is. ISM's coming after you. Oh, and we just have such a long time to reload. Now you're going to get pinced by the Ferdinand more than likely. Just don't... Oh, 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 oh. Don't expose yourself to the 100, man. Okay, I hope you think of this. Do not expose yourself to 100. You might as well go over there and start dueling the ISM. Try to make him miss if you can. Yikes. And he did miss. Nice. Oh, don't waste the shot. Okay, never mind. Not wasted. <laughs> Nicely done. Nicely done, guys, on the cap. The Ferdinand is a one-shot. This really... Does this not feel like a win, folks? This feels like a win right now. But we waited a little long. Ah, oh, geez, yeah, we needed to get into the cap. This is tricky because there's places to hide on this cap that you have to get pretty close before you can... Oh, there, look at this. Look at this. Nice. Oh, stay in there. Get him. Fire. Oh, okay. Hold the phone. How do we... Oh, that's because that guy did not have the hit points. I just had a video on this same thing earlier. Showed a game where I did the same thing. You get so excited about seeing the guy and he's near the cap. If he was on the cap, he was only there for a few potatoes because you can see all the hit points are being held by the 100-01. And oh my gosh. Mm. 
All right, so the question was, what could I have done in game at that point? I think your your best bet was to, once you took out the ISM, was to charge in there and make sure you try to get to that 100-01. That was going to be always that was always going to be very dangerous. Do we get a? Do we end up seeing this guy before we lose? No. So I don't know what his hit points were. Six kills, four thousand one hundred thirty damage, forty one assist. Is a really nice job right there. Really, the only thing I can say on this one to, you know, what could we do to turn this thing into a win? You needed to get some damage earlier. I think those two shots, and I don't want to put too fine a point on two shots at the beginning of the game, but you never know how that is going to steamroll or cascade. Had you taken those shots out, had you kept the E50 alive a little longer, maybe beat up or killed a few more on that flank that were pushing you, there's a lot of what ifs right there. So at each decision point, as you go, you kind of have to decide what the best idea was right there. But, you know, that one may have been the one that could have helped turn the tide a little bit earlier. I thought you played the end game pretty good. You did more or less what I would have done right there. I thought you were uh, managing your clip very well. It shows the weakness of this tank as a carry tank. It's nice to have that burst damage and take things down. But the 40 seconds of inability to really affect the battle is, is very difficult to deal with. But I thought you managed your clip pretty well the whole way right there. And then game, once you killed the ISM, you just kind of had to YOLO in. And I don't know if that would have worked. All right, you had your you had your shots. You were able to kill the Ferdinand. But had you YOLO'd in, I don't think you hit the Ferdinand on the run because your dispersion is so huge. And now you're fighting two guys potentially. But, you know, the Ferdinand was walking away. So maybe push in as hard as you can. And if it was in your mind that, oh my gosh, kill the Ferdinand, I'll be able to knock the points down and get to the next guy. Good idea, but... He wasn't really the guy with all the points. And I'm trying to see if he was even on. If he was on the cap, it was only in the last few seconds. Right? Because he kind of went around the corner right there. All right, cool. Let's take a look at another one in the GSOR Palooza. Take two. GSOR Palooza. I was supposed to make these two first looks in a row, but I, I have now cheated because this is the second time through. The reason being is occasionally OBS just decides to stop recording. Curses! Or I hit a key that uh, stops it. I don't know. I don't know why sometimes it stops recording. Do you know when I find out? I find out when it's over and I look down to stop the recording and I don't have to stop the recording because the recording is already stopped. <laughs> Nota Manitus is taking on the Barask. He is here on Sand River, spawned into the west side. He's going to get an ace tanker. He says this thing is slow start, strong finish. And I thought that was interesting, actually. My favorite word. Fascinating. Something of interest. A point to ponder. A desired learning point. <laughs> These things are slow to start and they are often fast to finish because I don't think a lot of people want to get these things right up front and start trading shots early because if you do so it's really easy to overextend and if you overextend and you get your four shots in and they have a chance they're going to jump all over you and it's going to be 40 seconds before you can get back so it's probably going to be one of those tanks that's played quite carefully until later on when there's a lot fewer numbers and you can get in there and make that four shot clip count I would have taken that shot earlier <laughs> right. So we're going to watch what Nona Manadus does. Now that I've actually seen this replay, it's going to be kind of fascinating. A point to ponder, a point of interest. Interesting, dare I say. Because it does take a while for this thing to develop. And let's just talk real quickly about the meta on this map. Because the north is interesting to me now. Fascinating, a point to ponder. <laughs> I think I'll do this the whole the whole video if you don't mind. The west spawn rarely goes north anymore. And they often fall back. They'll send someone to look and then the east spawn wins the north usually pretty easily. And then they push into the cap. Stop! <laughs> Stop! How well do you think the ST1, the Conqueror, and his buddy over there are going to do? Well, we'll just wait and watch, but I think you can guess. I think you can guess. Look at the campers. The guy's all at cap. The TD sniper spot up there just waiting for people to get lit up and start shooting them. You do have to be careful where Nona is because if he gets too much further to the southwest, he'll get in draw distance for the ISU. He's also got to watch the artillery. This thing is relatively soft. Artillery will uh, thump 
the GSOR 1008 pretty hard. And that Barasca would be really nice to get rid of that guy. I don't know why the Conqueror just doesn't go get him. But there are some TDs up there. You notice the T95 is unaccounted for. I'll give you one guess where he is. Or should I do the old, I'll give you two guesses and the first one doesn't count. Yeah, I think we all know where he is. We all know where he is. The WZ goes down. We're four minutes, guys, into this battle. Very unusual, even for Sand River and for the campy meta, to be four minutes into a battle and we've only lost that many. Now we're starting to get some movement, though. A couple heavies down. There goes the Emil 1. And the green team is looking to be in a good spot. But now they've got to figure out how to push into campers. That's a rock, Nona. Taking a look. Brosk is hiding down there. Don't see anything. Back out. Conscious of the snipers on the cap and the snipers on the sniper nest back there, the TDs. This is a good spot if you can get somebody lit to get some shots as long as you don't get lit. So the very careful GSOR gameplay, we'll take a peek. Sneak up a little bit more. I think we get lit here in just a second. Oh, ooh, there you go. You know, that's not a bad move. Get up so that your spotting point is above the ridge, but not commit all the way up and over so that if you do get lit, it's a long time to back off. As he did it, he was high enough to get lit and see what was going on, but no, not so far that he would be up and exposed for a long time. Now he's going to change, change his tune and come around this way. We've got a 6-1 to one advantage. It is time to get in there, but as you can see, we haven't done any damage. That is one of the difficulties of this tank. We saw that in the last game. Trying to figure out where you can go to get damage and affect the battle early. Frankly, at this point, his team has carried. That There's been not a whole lot that Nona has done. But let's see what he can do. We're going to come around this way. And I like this move. There's no sense moving across the middle anymore or pushing up against them. Coming around this way where, where there's some cover, this is absolutely the right answer. And I think I might have been moving this way a little bit earlier. I'm going to wait for the ISU. We can get a shot on him. No, can't see him. He's behind a rock, Nona. And we'll come up a little bit here. And pretty soon, I think, there we go. We're going to find the T95. There he is. The shot that goes high. Shot that misses. A little more carefully aimed. Plus, he stops moving. One thump, two thumps, and then, oh my gosh. Rarely do you see a T95 disintegrate that fast. That was, that was pretty good. And now... The old weakness of the GSOR 1008. He's in a good position. It's not It's not necessarily a weakness for him because he has a place to hide and he's far enough away he wasn't spotted anyway. But now it's a, the 39, 40 second, 49 year wait. Feels like four days. So just cool our heels back here. Looks like he's been using a mixture of his APCR and his AP, although Replays may be running together. I don't know how many AP Sherry came into the game with. Has he fired any? I don't know. Somebody can tell me. <laughs> I'm supposed to, I should know that, but I haven't been paying attention. As noted on the first... He's got a shot right there. As noted on the first replay, it's got a lot better velocity. We're just kind of sneaking ever so sneakily. Sneak ever so sneakily sneaky. Wait for this 152. He does get this shot. I just want to forewarn you. There you go. Nicely done. Thank you, RNG. But the enemy team has done a decent job of getting it closer. It's now 9 to 6. Remember, it was 6 to 1 at one point. They've broken out in the north. They're chasing the Scorpion G off. And his team, Nona's team, is coming through the middle. All right, so we push in here with only three shells. Now, here's a case where I'm pretty glad I actually did see this replay because we're going to run into a situation where we wish we had that extra shell. And I think, Nona, you probably should have hung out back here and got reloaded before you pushed in. And this is that mid to late game part where this tank can be, become an absolute killer, but you do have to manage it well. And I really think waiting 40 seconds, because there's no, there's no imperative need for you to go rushing in right now and get up under them. There, there really isn't. Not without all four of your shells. It'd be really much nicer if you came in there with all four of them. So of all the things I would call mistakes in this game, I think this was one of the, the bigger ones. So we're going to come in here. It's still a really nice burst damage capability, 1,000 damage. I mean, it's 320, so it's slightly less than 1,000. And this is why. So we run into the 1,200 hit point IS-22. Why is he pushing through here? I don't know. But there's plenty 
of targets over here. There's plenty of guys grouped in one spot. And there's enough of them such that if they find you, catch you out, they can do some pretty good damage. And unfortunately, you run into a two-barrel dude, and you don't have enough firepower to get rid of him. Now, he would have got that shot off no matter what. We're going to put that one more shot into him. And now we're out of out of shots to put into him. So that one more shell would finish him off. Um, so he wouldn't have been able to stop the double barrel blap we just got in the face. He did 806 or so. But we would have been able to kill him off. So he's trying to back out. He's hoping to reload. In fact, he was going to reload in another 10 seconds. And he gets nuked by the Visante. And it's all autoloader palooza. We've got a Char Futura, a Baraska, a GSOR. There goes the GSOR. We've got an even 90, a GSOR, a Basante. Holy cow, autoloaders everywhere. We need an auto reloader, unloader, reloader. You know what I mean? You shoot and you take a shell away from the other guy and then shoot it back at him or something. That's what we need. We're going to come in here and support the Basante. I like the aggression right here. No, don't shoot me. Not bad. He actually used the Basante as cover to come around. The char can't really push into him. So he takes that opportunity, kind of that uh, leapfrog kind of thing. Reloaded. Very nice. C-45 goes in, the stirb comes off the edge, we're going to come up here. Unfortunately, we kind of get a miss. And that dude thumps us, but we tip, kill him out. And we have two shells, but one. And a dose, I believe. There we go, nicely done. And we're all sitting at 2,825. The, <laughs> the T-55 YOLO's off the cliff. That is Guido approved. Well done. Well, I don't think he got the kill, unfortunately. No, he just fell off a cliff and died. And we're cruising with our one hit point. Fantastic. Big finish. 2,825 damage. Really nice. We're going to get to 3,000 and watch that go. This tank can absolutely be a killer. And I thought a really nice job overall of taking care of the reload. Minus maybe that push in with only three shells. You know, it's a small quibble. Argument could be made that you don't get those shots because you waited 40 seconds and the IS-22 is further up and he's hold down. Possibility right there. Possibility. Varas takes a hit. We're just going to speed this up. Because once again, I have cheated and seen this. It is not a first look completely. We'll come across here. We do a nice job staying out of the line of fire. Other guys are going to have to get those lights. We'll come in here and use a bush. Nicely done. Mr. Varas is going to show up nicely. He's kind of cornered unless he sneaks out through the south. T-10's looking for him. There he is. He's come up and over, getting a shot maybe on the T-10. He takes the thump, and boom. Enough shell velocity to, not, to make it not matter that he's moving. And we've got 3,399 damage, 291 assist, and three kills in two GSOR games. GSOR uh, Palooza. Those have given me uh, something to think about. I didn't really play the tank like that, which means I did not get as good a result. And I think that's really two great examples of how the tank should be played. I think the biggest trick with this, and once again, going back to answer APA Woody's question on what he could have done, is to somehow figure out how to get this thing into the fight early enough that you're doing a little bit of early damage or a lot of bit of early damage. Instead of kind of relying on the mid to late game, you know, in the case of Nona, his team did pretty well and really opened up the ability for him to do all the damage that he did mid to late game. And sometimes you just have to rely on that. He went to the north spot and just nothing was really going on there. Sometimes that's just how the, the ball bounces right there. But as an overall doing well and, and having a high damage ratio on this tank, figuring out how to get into a good support position to support early damage or to get early damage while maintaining your hit points and your votes, that's going to be the trick. And this tank more than a lot of auto loaders but think of any of your auto loaders with a really long reload that's the kind of gameplay you're talking with this thing and it does a decent job flexing to a medium type style late in the game not bad at all i mean it's got you got some burst my friends 1200 plus burst is is not bad you're talking about taking out you know full hit point tier eights and when you get to mid late game you got a lot of near deads and so you get even more possibilities just when you leave one or two alive and they're close enough to you you're in a lot of trouble all right, that's all I've got for GSR Palooza. Check it out. The recording's kept going. We will see you.